for a half of a quarter of a third of a tenth of a nanosecond when I was asked would I be willing to receive this award, will I be willing to allow my name to be attached to the awards as the Albies, I hesitated. What? I've been an iconoclast all my life and now I'm going to become an icon? <laughs> and the answer just came to me, it rushed to me, four strong, clear answers. Number one, you happen to be Alby. You could have been Nelson. After a certain Nelson everybody knows about. 27 years in jail, becoming the president of our country. What a marvelous story, what a marvelous example for others. Or it could have been his law partner. I'm just going to speak about the lawyers in South Africa who put themselves on the line. I don't think any one of them thought they were making a sacrifice. The sacrifice would have been if they just carried on with their lives without fighting back. That would have been sacrificing their dignity. And he said they joined with others. It was a marvelous movement. And we had betrayals, we had setbacks, we had people who cracked up. It was dire, dire, dire many, many times. But at the core of it, at the center, was that belief in humanity. It was a marvelous experience, a wonderful experience a privileged experience to be part and parcel of that movement. It could have been so many different lawyers. Oliver Tambo, you could have been Oliver, the law partner of Nelson Mandela. We all remember him with such love and affection 1989, Mandela's still in prison, state of emergency in the country, and he's flying a little Cessna aeroplane, his knees up to his chin, right across Africa, nonstop. His lawyers say, please don't travel, please don't travel. He said, we have to, this is such an important moment. He's carrying what was called the Harari Declaration, which was the final push to get humanity to come together through the Organization of African Unity, through the Commonwealth, through the General Assembly by general acclamation, to say this is the way forward through democracy for a new South Africa, and he had a stroke. He never lived to vote in the new democratic South Africa. It could be other people, lawyers, of whom I'm so proud in my country, much lesser known, you could have been called Griffiths, after Griffiths Mkenge. Young, brilliant, forceful, funny, brave lawyer, in and out of jail, defending people, assassinated. The same people who tried to kill me assassinated him, cut his body up. You could have been Victoria, Victoria Mkenge, his wife who carried on the legal practice after he died, and she too was butchered by those same Secret Service assassins. It could have been Bram Fisher, who defended Nelson Mandela, and then himself went underground and was captured and spent 10 years in jail. He died, his body was cremated, the ashes blown to the winds from a very distinguished Afrikaner family. It could have been my colleague on the Constitutional Court, Ishmael Mohammed, who practiced in the apartheid courts. He couldn't even open an office in the buildings where all the white advocates, lawyers, attorneys were. He had to squat. A progressive white advocate had to give him an office access to telephone. He went on to become the first black chief justice of South Africa. It could have been my colleague, Dekha Mosaneki. Ten years on Robben Island, arrested at the age of 15, and he writes in his book about how it was that he wanted to study law, and carrying the crushed stones in a wheelbarrow on Robben Island, alongside Walter Susulu and Nelson Mandela and others, 
he's learning Latin. Amo, amas, abat, amamas, amatis, amant. Went on to become Deputy Chief Justice of South Africa. So you happen to end up with the name Albi. It could have been any of those and so many more. Nothing special about me. Honestly, it's beautiful to hear those words. But I was a part of a movement. The movement was special. So many of us were special. The only thing special is I survived. I'm here. And I suppose in a very extraordinary way, as you can see from the LB, my wounds are visible. Other people suffered in their minds, inside their bodies, through depression. In my case, you can see. And in a way, it's understandable that I become then a symbol of resistance, of resilience, of hope and defiance. And that brings me to the second reason why it came strongly into my head, why I feel proud to be part of this movement, this activity, this institution, this grouping of people. Most awards represent perfect human beings. They're designed as some kind of idealized notion of perfection. And Albi is wounded. He's incomplete in terms of the ordinary vision of the so-called normal person. And by awarding this statue to people, you are, in a sense, ennobling, affirming all the people in this world who are referred to or regarded or sometimes see themselves as disabled. Thank you, Amala and George, for that affirmation. The name Albi, maybe now it's got a certain currency, but your beauty down the line won't come from my life. It'll come from the people who get the awards. They will give you that dignity. They will make you a coveted person to have in your home. You know, I was checking up yesterday on Oscar. I was amazed to discover the only quality Oscar had was a bald head. <laughs> According to Google, somebody in production, when the awards were being offered, referred to it, this document, this, this statuette, as an Oscar because she had an Uncle Oscar with a bald head. <laughs> and yet, it's one of the most coveted, desired awards that anybody could want. Not because of Oscar, but because of the people who over the decades were rewarded. And look at the marvelous people who've received the Oscar this evening. Wonderful people. And for me, that's the value. It's not my name giving dignity and honor and prestige to the award. It's the awards that give a kind of significance and a prominence, a kind of whimsical, if you like, humor to my name. But finally, perhaps the most important reason why I said yes, 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 not only will my name be, not that I have a copyright over my name, but will my name be attributed to this particular award. I feel with pride that I'm happy to participate in and belong and insert myself in and embody the project. And that's because of not the Clooney Foundation, 
but Amal and George, the Clooney people, the item, if you like. It, it's rare. For me, it, it's a beautiful relationship of love between two outstanding people, hugely successful in their careers and their lives, with each a magnificent personality and appearance. But it's more than that. There's something, I don't want to use the word spiritual, a kind of deep goodness and a sense of connection and excitement and fun in that relationship. You manage to be formidable and you manage to have fun. And that's what's made this evening so remarkable for me. It's not a choice between being serious, being indignant, being organized, being passionate, being dedicated, being committed on the one hand, and loving life, and laughing, and enjoyment of human existence and possibilities on the other. And something that I've often commented on with a certain sense of sadness, the human rights community in many parts of the world is so dolorous, it's so down, it's so gloomy, it's so angry, and anger is a marvelous emotion, but if it's just anger and just denunciation, you lose your humanity. And what's so great about Amal and George, George and Amal, is that sense of humanity, that sense of vitality, of love, of embrace, of connection, something that makes them so admired and so popular, enters into their work. And without humanity, without that sense of human love and compassion interdependence, it matters not we bring down the regimes that are so evil. It's not enough that we liberate the justice system from its own imperfections. That sense of humanity has to be there. And George and Amal, I feel that so strongly in everything that you do. I'm very, very, very proud to be associated with your project. I'm still slightly amused and bemused by my name cropping up in the way it does. The only time I heard my name being used in that sort of way was in the jail diary of L.B. Sachs, the play based on my jail diary, and I'm hearing the warders shouting, Albi, 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 the, 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 the actors doing that all the time. So may your work continue. This is like the first occasion of this kind. I suspect it's not going to be the last by any means. It's been a wonderful evening for me. It's been a liberating, revitalizing, energizing and fun and enjoyable evening. Long may you continue with your work. stage now while you're all applauding, but there are two other people that I'd like to mention tonight, and, and the one is Darren Walker. Uh, and, and the Ford Foundation that in many phases in my life, after I was blown up, uh, it, very important times, Ford has been there to help me carry, carry on with, with the work. And the other person I'm going to mention is Alfre Woodard for a very special reason. Alfre is here with us tonight. And Alfre was part of Artists for a New South Africa, a group of Hollywood people who really fought by our side in the days of the struggle. And through you, Alfred, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of people who struggled in South Africa to all those Americans who fought to bring apartheid down. You did fantastic work. 
African-American community was right at the center of it, but it spread to universities, it spread to the banks, it spread everywhere, a beautiful sign of what international solidarity can do of the kind of work that's being done by George and Amal. Thank you. Thank you.